I don't cool over here. I don't cool them A and R's. I cool them M's and R's. It's like they mm bit, and then they R bit, and then it's like you're fucked. The UK music scene kind of makes you rush. It's like you drop the album, you're hot. Yo, we need another one by next Christmas because the market's up 30%. Then and the rare, rare, rare. And it's like, hold on, you're an artist, especially ones that write your own music. You write your own music. How the hell have you lived enough in one year to write a new album? Everything's too based on the textbook. It's like everyone forgets about how it feels. And just be yourself if they're gonna love you for who you are. Then just be yourself if they're gonna hate you. Just be yourself. When you're making music, how do you address the fact that you've, like we were saying before, you've grown so much, but the audience may not be able to catch up to your own move? You know what, there's, I don't want to start letting off lines from the tape and that, but it's like, for ages, I wasn't, like comfortable in understanding that the thought process that I was having as a teenager was not your average thought process that most teenagers are having. Do you know what I mean? It's like I look at collaborating with an American as a flight. Yo, how we doing this? Where we booking? Where we staying? Other people look at it as like, bro, how do you even get my man's email? Do you get know what I'm saying? It's just I just think big. Do you know what I mean? So it's like for ages that's hard to digest because it's like I'm a risk taker. It's like. Cause I'm confident, it's like I don't mind doing something where if I do it today, someone's gonna shoot me down. But I know in two years they're gonna be doing the same thing. It's like people that like were pointing the finger at me for making like certain career choices. Now that they've lived a bit and seen that there is another side to music, when they're going and doing certain things that they would have swore blind they would never do for ignorant, I'm from the block reasons. They want to get in touch with me now just to have a conversation to think like how far should I be pushing my brain in terms of where this can go. So it, it was hard at a time but now it's like I'm in a space where like I've got my hunger back which is something that I just completely lost for ages and you can probably tell when I lost it. Do you know what I mean? But you can hear it in my music so it's like I'm happy for that because I know what it felt like when I made League of My Own. I was gassed and you know I was gassed because I didn't have a single thing to consider when I was making my music apart from showing people that I'm talented and that's the same thing that came with London where it's like T.I. basically said oh you think you can rap get in the studio and make a mixtape show us like this is a whole new territory you gotta show people you know what I mean and because of what you've done and you know statistically what you've done over there people take the UK market serious we should be able to pull in some heavy-handed features of choice, you know, for you to go neck and neck with to show people you're at that global stratosphere of delivery, you know what I mean? Not on like scale statistically, just word for word, because all London way is a pack of bars, swear down. So it was, it was hard to digest for ages, but I think more people are starting to get it now and it's like to the point where even people my age don't perceive me as my age, and it just is what it is for ages. It was hard to digest and understand, but now I'm just like, I'm with it, I'm cool. I'm more at one with myself than I was before, so I'm just gonna reflect in the music. Yeah, it's interesting where you're at the age, is that, you know, before I was saying to myself, like, Chip is really, he's only 22. You know, mm. I think people still haven't, they still haven't got that grasp. Yeah. Know. But when I was looking at track listing, one of the songs that kind of stuck out to me in terms of the title was the song Help Me. Yeah. Delaro. Yeah. Now, are you able to break down what that song's about? Because I haven't heard it. I would just say this. Um, Delilah, like, I'm glad that, you know, you're like the second person today to mention that track, or even the third. It's like in terms of piecing the puzzle together, I wanted what I wanted the mixtape to be. She was the last person I pulled in. Well, she's like a extremely talented singer. You know what I mean? She she's clipped her own vibe in terms of music. Like anyone that listens to Delilah's music, I'm pretty sure listens to it for the same reasons as me. She captures a vibe that you know, not many people can and I know for certain she's super sceptical about who she works with and affiliates her brand and what she's created with. So when I reached out and she was like, yeah, let's do it, I was gassed. Like, 
there's no feeling that beats working with someone that you admire. Do you know what I mean? Like I admire the like oh, I always so afraid or ashamed to admit that oh, it's that they admire like I admire the like that like, her music. Do you know what I mean? So piece that together and understanding that she doesn't work with any and anyone, it's like that audience that she brings to London boy is like the icing on the cake where I know even if I don't have your heart yet, I'm gonna have your ears. Do you know what I'm saying? You can come to my CD with your hater ear, but it's gonna be very hard to leave once you listen to it as a body of work still hating. Do you know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got Movado, you got Delilah, you got Wretch, you got Young Jeezy, you got Skepta, you got TI, you got Professor Green, you got Meek Mills. You know what I'm saying? It's like, if you can tell me when it's been done like that before, then I'll push my release date back. <laughs> yeah. Well, in saying that, like, we're even, when you look at the features, that's kind of like, let me not jump in. It's almost like, you know, Games Jesus Peace has a lot of, yeah. a lot of like, quality features. Um, how do you approach each feature though? Because like I'm saying, the lad is different to Yeah. I, I, I approach it on like what am I trying to capture with the record, you know what I mean? It's like in terms of features. I never think Delilah was the, probably the only one where I thought about the artist before I thought about the track. Everyone else is like who suits the record. It's like when you hear the me, T.I. and Jeezy record, you completely get why T.I. and Jeezy's on it. Do you get what I'm saying? But more importantly, it's like everyone that I put on the CD pushes me, you know, on the artist side of things, you know what I mean? I can't be taking verses lightly because you don't want to get rubbed out on your own track. Do you get what I'm saying? So it was just people that I felt would push me, you know, musically and everybody did. And bringing it all together, even having Parker on there, who's just been signed by Nicki Minaj, you know what I mean, who made Oopsie Daisy, that people wouldn't know he may do it like a dude, but he's just been signed by Nicki and now he's doing his own artist thing. The vibe that he brings to the CD as well, it's like, it's all people I can learn from, you know what I mean, and admire their craft and what they do, that push me to make sure that, obviously it's my CD, I'm on the majority of it, that I can execute the best of me, you know what I mean, so that's how I approach my features. I know for a long time, man, you feel like that you want to get ambitious work in the school. Right? Yeah. But I also feel that, you know, you know, where you are today, you also have like an aim out here as well. Because I've always picked up about you. What's going on now with a lot of the artists why they're not here? Connecting. Yeah, what's going on? Because I know you have, you know, from the outside, what do you reckon? This is it, yeah? I say this. I don't call over here, I don't call them A and R's, I call them mmms and R's. It's like they mmm a bit, and then they are a bit, and then it's like you're fucked. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, and I say this, I say this to any artist, like, the second you start hearing shit like from your label, like, yo, we're gonna test this record, like, the word test, like, my mate Josh from New York told me this, he said, my nigga, when you start hearing, we're gonna test that shit, my nigga, run. I was like, cool, yeah, you know I'm saying, I thought about it, like, raw, like, it's true, like, like, we're gonna test your record or we're gonna put it out and see how it feels. Like, what the hell do you mean you're gonna put it out there and see how it feels? Like, this is my track. We need to go boom, 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 boom. Do you get what I'm saying? And it's like, what I feel has happened, especially with a lot of the people that came out when I did, you are lost in the success. That's what I think happened, and it nearly happened to me, but the point when I clipped, it was flying high, like I clipped and I snapped out, I did flying high. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, but it's very easy to get lost in that world of, the UK music scene kind of makes you rush. It's like you drop the album, you're hot, yo, we need another one by next Christmas because the market's up 30% then and the rare, rare, rare. And it's like, hold on, you're an artist, especially ones that write your own music. You write your own music. How the hell have you lived enough in one year to write a new album and put it out? So after one year of another album, after two years of another album, after three years of another album, the feeling that you put into your music gets less and less and less because you're not living, you're just wrapped in what you're doing. Do you get what I'm saying? So at the point where it's album free now and it's, you know, the people that were with you at the very beginning that could hear the hunger and the passion and the story and the personalness in your music, they're not hearing that anymore. They're onto the next person who has. And that person today might be Drake, or The weekend, or, do you know what I mean? People that actually execute some real emotion into their music. And then the new kids like Rizzle Kicks.
So it's like, you have to try and gauge the space where you're putting yourself as an artist. And that's why I've took the time to even do this project and release it for free as such and as much. Because for me, like I said to my guns, the past two years, year and a half to two years have been more about positioning than they have been stats. Do you know what I mean? And I think in terms of the long game, when you look at it like a marathon and not a sprint, as long as if he, whatever he sold in the past few years, when I can turn around and say to you, come next to me and rap then, let's see what happens. Let's see if your plaque can help you then. Do you get what I'm saying? It's like, that's what the past two years have been about for me. And now that I've done that, it's like the, the icing point of that is London way. Like, do you know what I mean? It's hair, it's package, it's hair. Listen, just hear me out. This is what I've spent the past two years building up to this moment. Then, you know what I mean? I'm on Wiley's next single in the new year and I will I will use it as a trampoline, do you know what I mean? And then I'll be right back into the swing of things of, you know, releasing singles. It might not be straight away, because like I said, I've, I've learned that try and gauge when the people want music from you and one thing that I'm never gonna do and I'll stick to my guns is not rust, because every single a &R that said to me, yo, you need to put a single now because this person's coming and that person's coming and then you're gonna get washed away and everyone's gonna forget you. And it's still on my phone line today, so. You know what I mean? You've got to try and gauge where you're at as a person and I say this to the artist as well. If you want to know where your song's at, you know, you drop a song and you want to know where it's at, go out there. Like, I don't think you can, like, YouTube views, no, no, no. Like, you can't gauge it off that. You drop a song, like, go out there and see where it's at. Like, literally, when I drop more money, more gear, like, no video, no nothing in terms of the urban side of things. I dropped the song, gave it two weeks went to the club, press play, I'm, I'm looking, I'm just dancing around like a clown, I'm looking like, who's singing this? Who's dancing? Like, I know I made it for, so let me see if I'm getting that reaction. Let me see if he's gassed when his drinks comes, when this song comes on. Let me see if she's dancing. Let me see if he's pre and her because the song makes you do that. You know what I mean? You have to go out there and look and see where the song is. I don't think he got a million views, you're gonna go number one or top 20. I, I don't wanna name you some people that I found out it doesn't go like that. You know what I mean? You have to go out there and see where your music's at. So there's that and not rushing and once you do that and understand and if you write your own music I feel like you have to give yourself some time to live. It's like I listened to Transition, it's a dark album. I was in a dark place. If I could go back, I'll do it again. Do you know what I mean? But you have to get to that point, like the amount of time I've given myself to live now, I can guarantee I feel like my next album will do statistically well and be an excellent body of work because I've took the time like rushing. Say no rush, no fuss, but a lot of people have been rushing and now they're reaping the benefits of rushing. Yeah, interesting. Like, um, I don't feel you always get credit. Right, I think, I think you do. You're a smart young black man. Mm -hmm. Is that intimidating some people? Because like, all the things you've articulated, someone who has a job as an A&R yeah. would expect when they say something to you, you listen and you do. Yeah, cool. I think, um, I think the thing with me, yeah, that a lot of people don't have is like, I'm willing to listen, like, I listen to everyone, like, I'll listen to you just as much as I'd listen to, you know, Billy just as much as I listen to anyone that has something to tell me, I listen. What I do with the information after that is completely aside to the fact that I'll listen. A lot of people are just so stuck in their ways that they just end up just thinking that they can just do everything, do you know what I mean? And the harsh reality is you can't, you know, I never delude the fact that my profession is making music, do you know what I mean? So, but even with that, if you tell me something that you feel about my track, I'm gonna take it on board because you're a listener. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm not thinking, hey, I'm not artist and you're just a listener, so I must be right and you must be wrong. And I feel that that's where a lot of people go wrong, man. You just get too stuck in your ways and you don't listen, you know what I mean? Even with A&Rs, it's like, everything's too based on the textbook, it's like everyone forgets about how it feels. Do you know what I mean? It's just like the other day when I won't say who, but you know, I was sending in a verse for someone's track, and then they said, um, the AR basically like they changed the drums on the song, yeah. So I've, they've sent me back, I've sent my verse to like a demo where I recorded, and they've sent me back the um like their track and it's like the drums have completely changed and I'm like but if you sent me this track with these drums I would have written something different because I write to instruments I look at my voice like it's an instrument you can't just take my track and put it on a song and change the drums you know what I mean so I'm in the studio 
So we've gone over and the A&R was like to me, I'm like, look man, I'm like, the song's a hit anyway, do you know what I mean? It's like, don't overthink it, you're trying to do this, you're thinking about the pre-hook, the rare and rare, because you're doing so much thinking about it charting that you're forgetting how it feels. And he said to me about the artist whose track it was, the A&R said to me, well, on the last track we did, I said, we ch let's change this, 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 and we changed it and it went number three. And I said, well, if you focused on how it felt and you didn't change it, it might have went number one. There you go. So that's the story about a and for me. Everything that, a lot of a and I can say I've come across world a and that actually get it and go more by the feeling, but over here, everything's by the textbook. It's literally based on what they think two radio stations want to hear. And I think in time that will change, but I don't think it will be tonight. But I'm at a stage where I go by what feels right before what I think people want to hear. What would Chip say to Chip when he was younger? Yeah. Um, first I say like, why are you so gassed, bro? <laughs> but then after that, I'd probably say like, when you're a teenager, it's all right to be a teenager. When you're an adult, you do what adults do. Don't overthink it and just be yourself. If they're gonna love you for who you are, then just be yourself. If they're gonna hate you. Just be yourself, but when you're a teenager, like it's alright to be a teenager, like you're allowed to fuck up. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd say.